This is a BMW E83 with all the six cylinder goodness. The owner states that he's having issues with the quote unquote something seized. Upon my test drive, I noticed that his offside front brakes are really hot compared to the rest. So I investigated to find out what's happening. And then I found something that is kind of puzzling. That's a neutral. That's what it looks like. That's fine. This side. Seized. Let's have a look. I'm not entirely sure just see how it may be. I'm just trying to assess this caliper. If it will wind back or not. If not, then we're gonna need a new caliper. Weirdly enough, it's not seized. I actually went back in quite nicely. Hmm, right, I'm gonna investigate and find out. See if the ABS sensor is good or not. Not the ABS sensor, the ABS module. We'll see. Have a look at this. This two pin, it just seems like the rubber has melted onto it. It's probably due to the heat that's coming from it, but from the looks of it, it's actually like, it looks like old grease. Like, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. And when I was actually taking it out, it was very difficult to ratchet this damn thing. So I reckon it's just not sliding in and out properly. We'll give this a clean and go for a test drive again. And see if it makes a difference. So we have actually made a decision to replace this caliper here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before anyone says anything, I'd want to explain something first. Even after cleaning and backing up the brake components, it still binds and causes the brakes to overheat. And so, I made the decision to... So, I was going to bleed it thinking that it might have been a cut brake fluid, as one of the mechanics suggested to me in our group chat. And as you can see right there, it is cooked, seized, whatever you want to call it. It's a bye-bye for this one. So. We'll replace that with a new padded part and I've cleaned up all this part now and the next thing that I need to do is put the padded in. Now then, at this point I'm just putting everything back together, making sure that everything is greased and cleaned properly to prevent squeak and future seizing. Obviously, we use padded brake pads in this to ensure quality, longevity and reliability. We definitely don't want this to happen again. After putting everything back together, we obviously have to bleed the system, otherwise we will be giving our customer a massive yes heart attack for when he drives his car. On to the next side. Moving on to the other side, I will only be replacing the brake pads and disc. First step would be to remove the caliper spring and the two caliper bolts holding the caliper to the carrier. Once the caliper is off, use the longest breaker bar to undo the caliper holder bolts. This will enable you to remove the disc. The brake disc is likely to be held on by H5 or 7 screw. Remove that and you should be able to hammer the disc off the hub. Make sure to clean the carrier and the hub to ensure the new pads and disc will sit correctly. Once that's all done, fit the brand new stuff and work in reverse order. Don't forget to torque everything to spec and that is this done we're gonna go for a test drive earlier it took about 15 minutes before it started basically making some weird noise so we're gonna take it out for at least half an hour fingers crossed all goes well a few minutes later all right as you can see right there there is no heat marks whatsoever so now it is actually braking nicely we've installed a new padded caliper and obviously padded brake pads and disc on this one so i would say that that is a job well done yet again well i would say so myself even though it had me puzzled i still managed to figure out with some friendly help from my fellow mechanic i believe that in this industry you'll never be that guy you're constantly learning and gaining experience so let's keep going this is the only job that I'm going to do for today. It's a Sunday. It's not something that I usually do, but I've been off for two days trying to sort my van out. So the next day and good morning, everyone. So early morning today, nice and sunny. Thank goodness for that, because we still have a clutch to do after this one. So with this BMW, I was here probably, I think it was Sunday, something like that. I replaced the brake disc and uh, brake disc and pads and the caliper as well on the offside front, purely because it was seizing in place. Another customer complaint that I had about this vehicle, the coolant bottle light keeps coming on on the dash. So we'll be diagnosing that issue. I have a feeling that it's a secondary water pump, but who are we to say until we diagnose it? So let's go and diagnose it. And as I thought, you can have a look here. 
which is the electric coolant water pump. So yeah, it's the secondary water pump, but what we're going to do is we're gonna run an active test just to find out if it is actually that. We need to confirm it by seeing if the water is actually squirting back into the coolant bottle. And if that doesn't squirt whilst the engine is turned off, that means that electronic coolant pump has actually failed. So we'll find out, we'll run an active test. And here we go, it's at 50% and it's activated. So, as you can see there, look, you see that? It's just barely bubbling. And that's at 50%. Now we'll run it at 95% and see. Oh, it's squirting out. Hmm, interesting. Right, so obviously, the water pump is working. We know that it's working, don't touch it, okay? It's running at 100%. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, because the code is only coming up as reduced performance and there's a cause for that. That code only really comes up if there is an airlock in the system somewhere. So I'm going to try and bleed it and see if it's gonna cure it. So we're gonna go for a 15 to 20 minute test drive because last time, after 15 minutes of driving it, you know, when I was testing the caliper, if everything's okay. It took me 15 minutes and warning light keeps on coming up. So we're gonna try that first. We're gonna give it a go, we're gonna bleed it and we're gonna find out if our bleeding is the cure for it. So I'll catch you guys in a minute. So as you can see right there, it's at the maximum level now. I can't pull out the thick. So we're gonna activate it. And see. You can hear there's like some sputtering there so that's, there is a little bit of air the first time i did it this actually went all the way down to the bottom so yeah we'll keep going keep bleeding it, and then we'll go for a test drive we've put probably about a liter of water in there now so yeah it's likely just to be an airlock that's why the performance is reduced as, as it says on the fork code just going for a test drive let's see if the secondary pump is actually working after bleeding so we actually topped it up by probably i can't estimate it's quite difficult i would say about a liter i would say just about a liter so fingers crossed it doesn't come on we're gonna go for a 15 minutes test drive 15 20 minutes anyway let's drive now so let's get to it you can see no warning at the moment so five minutes in still nothing until about that roundabout over there. And last time when we took it, well, when I took it for a drive because John was having fun somewhere else. Right? Just remember, guys, here's my girl when uh, he's working. Uh, but yeah, it usually comes, I'll tell you at which point it comes on. It's by that roundabout. Over there. Right. So by this point, last time when I came in to do the brakes, uh, this is when it actually came on this roundabout here. I went out twice obviously to test it first and then the second one is to obviously break the brakes together. Break um, it in. The disc and pads, yeah. And from the looks of it, it's a-okay now or am I speaking too soon? Find out on the way back. Yeah, we'll find out on the way back, see if that comes on or not. All right, so good news for the customer. The light did not come on at all during that drive. Usually after that drive, you'd say somewhere in between that drive on the halfway point, that's when that light comes on. So that's, that's good news for the customer. We'll inform him, it's fixed. Let's go. Right, so that job was successful. Customer is happy, saved him about 800 pounds on bills so yeah as you know those water pump the secondary water pump on those uh, six cylinder bmw engines are very expensive so he is happy that he didn't have to spend that 800 pounds he only had to pay me for my labor and some diagnostic fee so happy days on to the next we've got much to do on a toyota i go we go Right now, we are here on this Toyota Igo. So me and John tried to obviously get it to move and stuff, it just wouldn't because the concentric slave 
it's completely shot as you can see right there we tried bleeding it but it's not getting any pressure at all and i've also got my one-way valve bleeder over here and for whenever he pumps it as you know this is a one-way valve the fluid would come back down anyway which tells me that somewhere down there there is a split on the line so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be replacing concentric slope and obviously the clutch kit as well because that's what this car needs uh, we're gonna run a time lapse while we set up and obviously i'm gonna be removing the stuff at the top so we get free access let's get going first bolt that i touched today this is what happened that's a battery terminal bolt as well ah! This little car was not so hard to work with. I'd start removing the battery and battery tray so we can get access to the gearbox bolts and gear linkages. Once that's done, we can move under the car so we can work on removing the drive shaft, dog bone mount and gearbox bolts underneath. Whilst we were doing that, this happened. Nothing ever goes right. Alright, John has just uh, come across a little shit over there. Look, it's just turning and turning on the way out. You're never stopping. <laughs> it's not happening, is it? Nah, mate. What the hell is this? Alright, just put it back in and then I think we're just gonna remove it from here. Oh! Pull my bus. Pull my bus and pull my bus. That plastic is so hot. Nice! Oh my god, I'm ripped. Okay. Looking at this concentric slave cylinder, you can clearly see that it's leaking. Broken. Finished. As everyone knows on this channel, we don't go halves on parts. So we'll be replacing this with LUK CSC and XCD clutch kit, which is OEM to Toyota. Let's get this set. Right, so the gearbox is out now. We're going to be replacing the concentric slave. You've seen the state of it. And we're also going to be replacing the clutch at the same time because it's likely that it's going to be contaminated with a lot of brake fluid. So we're going to be supplying with LUK concentric slave and a, I believe it's XCD clutch plate and pressure plate. So let's get to it, man. We don't want to be taking too long on this job. So I want to be home early to be nice and cozy and I think there's rain coming as well. Let's get to it. Like check up top if there's any wires. That's gonna cook. Slipped in. Push the button. Nice. So John is just finalizing everything now. We'll put everything back together. It's just putting the under tray back in. Everything's back in. That, that gave us a hard time, honestly. That was like so difficult to put in. It was semi-rounded, but not really. That's why it was very difficult to put in. It was leaking and all that stuff. It was just annoying, but we pulled through. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna go to Halfords and exchange some of my tools because my 14 mil, not ratcheting, 30. Pretty much every ratcheting one is not working. So I'm just probably gonna get it changed. So we will catch you at Halford. Say bye, John. Say catch you in a minute. Bye bye. Oh. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Peace.